You're listening to the TMA Radio Show. All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Welcome all of my listeners across the world. Hey, tonight is Tuesday Night Sports Minute, and we're going to be doing it live here in the beautiful city of Lewisburg, North Carolina, that is 28 miles north of Raleigh. Hey, we thank and praise God for another day. We thank and praise God for grace and mercy, a right mind. We thank God for health, good good health. Amen. We thank God for an appetite. That we'll be able to eat something today. And we thank God for all the blessings that he give us. And we thank him for his son Jesus that died on a cross. But we thank him for rising up with all power in his hand. He did it for you and I. That we may be able to have a right to the tree of life. In the kingdom of heaven. So we give God the praise and the glory for everything. And tell somebody every Tuesday night is sports minutes. And we're ready to kick it up in a minute. So stay tuned. All right, Jeff, take them away. Hi, everybody. It's great to be back here on the show. Uh, thank you once again, Minister Ackridge, for having me on. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the sports. Let's, let's do a recap. Uh, let's start off with a recap of the Saints versus the Panthers. Um, you want to talk about the the shock of the week. Uh, I, I, I was actually at work when I found the score out. Uh, one of my co-workers, uh, Kayla, she's a huge Panthers fan. I asked her what the score was. And at the time, the score was 41-3. to And I was like, no, no, you got to be joking. That can't be the score. And she showed it to me, and I, I stood there with my jaw on the floor because I, I don't know of anybody that saw that score, you know, coming. I mean, I, most of the Panthers fans I talked to were, were like, nah, I don't think we're going to win this game. It's going to be tough winning in New Orleans. Well, you found a way to win that one. I mean, it, Panthers fired on all cylinders. Their defense shut New Orleans down. Their offense was efficient. Jonathan Stewart had a very good game. Uh, it it was it was a game the Panthers had to win and they played their best football of the year, so great win for the Panthers. Uh, Got to tip my hat off to them. I I didn't see that one coming. They really surprised me. But you know I'm sure a lot of I'm sure a lot of Panthers fans are wondering where has this been all year. But you know better late than never. So it's good for the Panthers. But for the Saints though, if you're a New Orleans fan, you really got to be scratching your head. I I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand the, 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 the team, really. I mean, how how can you explain this? I mean, they've lost four straight games at home. I, 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 might be, I might be wrong on this one, but I can't ever remember the Saints losing four straight games at home with Drew Brees as the starting quarterback. Uh, it was, this was a game the Saints really needed to win. They couldn't find a way to get it done. They couldn't pass effectively. They couldn't, you know, they couldn't stop. The, the Panthers' offense, it just nothing went right for them in that game. Uh, of course, Drew Brees continued his his touchdown streak, but I'm sure he would have much rather preferred to have won the game. So, pretty disappointing for the Saints, and they got to bounce back and bounce back quickly because, you know, well, fortunately for them, the Falcons lost in a in a very good game on Monday night. The Falcons gave the Packers all they could handle, but. The Saints, uh, they've, as I said, they got to get it together and fast because their division. Granted, you got two teams that, well, two teams at five and eight, and one team at four, eight, and one. It may not be a very good-looking division, but in the end, it's still a division. You win your division, you go to the postseason. That's the way it is. So, if the Saints can find a way to sort of gain their composure, they they could get into the postseason. But it's going to be interesting to see who. 
ends up winning that division by the time it's all said and done. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scores from the last week. On Thursday night, the Cowboys played the Bears, and the Cowboys won 41-28. Uh, once again for the Bears, pretty disappointing year. Uh, you look at the offense they've got, the talent they've got on that team, and for them to not be able to win games is pretty surprising. So I know Bears fans must be scratching their heads. I mean, if most if most quarterbacks had <laughs> Alshon Jeffrey, Brandon Marshall, and... Santonio Holmes is their number four option, and Martellus Bennett at tight end, and I haven't even mentioned Matt Forte. You would think as a team you'd be able to to win some games, but that hasn't been the case for Chicago this year. The Steelers beat the Bengals 42-21 to in Cincinnati. I can't figure Cincinnati out either. I don't understand this team. For one week they're winning against really good, really good teams, and the next they're losing the games they have to win. For some reason with Cincinnati, when it comes out to games they have to win, they just don't find a way to win them. The Rams beat the Redskins 24 to nothing. The Giants beat the Tennessee Titans 36 to seven. Panthers, as I mentioned earlier, they beat the New Orleans Saints uh, 41 to 10. The Vikings beat the Jets 30 to 24. Ravens beat the Dolphins 28 to 13. Miami really could have helped their cause um, for a wild card berth if they'd have won the game, but unfortunately they lost, and now they're going to end up scrambling because they've got a very tough game in New England. If New England wins next week, then they win their division. You know, usually when New England's got a chance to clinch, they do it. It's not good news for Miami. They they're going to need to really get things going late if they want to have any chance of making it to the playoffs. The Colts beat the Browns 25 to 24 in Cleveland. Lions beat the Buccaneers 34-17. Houston Texans won 27 to 13 over the Jaguars. Houston staying in the playoff hunt. It should be interesting to see what happens to them by the end of the year. Broncos beat the Bills 24 to 17 and arguably one of Peyton Manning's worst performances of his career. But you know, it's a good sign when you're able to still win games and Manning's not playing well if you're Denver. The Cardinals beat the Chiefs 17 to 14. Chiefs needed to win that one, were not able to get it done. Seahawks won 24 to 14 against the Philadelphia Eagles in Philly. Raiders beat the 49ers, and once again, the 49ers, another team I can't quite figure out. Uh, losing a game they really had no business losing, but they, they lost it. Patriots beat the Chargers 23 to 14 in San Diego. Pretty impressive game from Jamie Collins, who's really turning into a star in the NFL. And the Packers beat the Falcons, as I mentioned earlier, 43 to 37. Let's go ahead and take a look at the standings in the NFL. We're getting closer and closer to the playoff time, so getting a refresher on the standings is definitely a good thing. The Patriots lead their division in the AFC East. They are 10 and 3. The Dolphins are 7 and 6. The Bills are 7 and 6, and the the New York Jets are 2 and 11 in the AFC East. AFC North. Cincinnati Bengals lead their division. They are 8-4-1. Pittsburgh and the Ravens are tied for second with an 8-5 record, and the Cleveland Browns are 7-6, and, and they are fourth in that division. The Indianapolis Colts lead their division, the AFC South. They are 9-4. Houston is behind them at 7-6, and, and Tennessee and Jacksonville are 2-11. AFC West, Broncos lead their division with a 10-3 record. San Diego Chargers are behind them with an 8-5 record. Of course, the Chargers play the Broncos <clears throat> on Sunday night, which would be a very, well, it's going to be a, a, uh, a good game, I think, but it's very significant for the Chargers. If they have any shot of making it to the postseason, they have got to win that game against the Denver Broncos. <clears throat> Kansas City is in third place in the AFC West with a 7-6 record, and the Oakland Raiders are 2-11. In the NFC East, the Philadelphia Eagles are tied with the Dallas Cowboys at 9-4 uh, to, lead, to lead that division. Uh, more on that later. The New York Giants are 4-9 and the Washington Redskins are 3-10. The NFC North. 
The Green Bay Packers lead their division with a 10-3 record, and the Detroit Lions are 9-4, one game behind the Packers. The Minnesota Vikings are 6-7, and, and the Chicago Bears are 5-8. NFC South. Falcons lead their division with a 5-8 record because they um, own the tiebreaker right now over the New Orleans Saints because they have the better divisional record. Uh, keep in mind, division record is going to be pretty big in that NFC South but uh, when it all comes down to it. The Carolina Panthers are 4-8-1. They are a half a game in back of the division leader. Um, as I said a few weeks ago, that tie could really come back to help the Carolina Panthers, um, especially if they win out. If the Panthers are able to win out, I think they're going to end up winning that division. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are 2-11, and, and they are in fourth place in their division, the NFC South. NFC West, Arizona Cardinals found a way to win last week. Big win on their part. They are 10-3. They are holding on for dear life in that division um, against the Seattle Seahawks, who are 9-4, just one game in back of them. San Francisco 49ers are 7-6, and, and the Rams are 6-7. and seven. So let's, let's, let's take a look at my marquee game for the upcoming week. My, my game that I have as the biggest game is the Sunday night game, Eagles versus Cowboys. This is, this is going to be a great game because this is the time of year for me where we really see what, te what the teams are made of. And of course one of the big questions are, it, you know, is are, are the Cowboys for real? Or has this year just been another tease to Cowboys fans of what this team could and should be? And are, are the Eagles a contender with Mark Sanchez at quarterback? Or is the loss of Nick Foles too much for them to bear when it comes down to the, the final stretch of the season? By keys for Dallas, they, they've got to get Jason Witten the football. I mean, they have to get him the football. We already know what DeMarco Murray is capable of. But if Dallas is going to have any chance of going to the playoffs and advancing deep into January, they've got to get Jason Witten going, especially in the red zone. They haven't really been able to do that in the last few weeks, and I think the results of it have been shown. They've lost some games because I, I just I, I think in the red zone, they've got to find a way of getting the ball to the big target, which is Jason, Jason Witten. He's been their bread and butter for the last eight years now. They've got to find a way to get him going. My keys for the Eagles... Well, I said it last week, consistency. They've got to have consistency. You know, if, if, they, if, if they could just keep the same level of intensity throughout, throughout the games that they've played, I think they could really be a team to be reckoned with. But unfortunately, you don't know, you don't know how much energy they're going to maintain throughout a game. But they've got to find a way to play strong for all four quarters of the game. Otherwise, they, I see them... Uh, having a tough time against the Cowboys. So my prediction, I, I said early in the season that the Cowboys have one of the best overall teams in the NFL, and I'm sticking with that. I believe they're going to make a statement to the rest of the NFL that they are indeed a Super Bowl contender, and I believe that they're going to beat their rival, the Philadelphia Eagles, by a final score of 31-28. to Let's take a look at the the playoff picture in the NFL. As we get closer to the, the end of the season, we are going into week 15. I can't believe we're already close to done with the year, but we are. Now, let's take a look at the AFC playoff picture. If the season ended today, the Patriots would have their one seed, the Broncos would have the two seed, and the Colts would host a wild card game with the three seed, um, and the Bengals would host a wild card game. The Bengals would play against the Steelers at home, and the, the Colts would play at home against the San Diego Chargers. But, of course, there are other teams that are still in the playoff hunt in the AFC. The Ravens are still in it, the Houston Texans are in it as well, and the Dolphins and the Chiefs are still in the playoff picture. In the NFC, if the season ended today, the Cardinals would have the one seed, and the Packers would have the two seed. The Eagles and Falcons would have the 3 and 4 seed and they would host home games and the, the Eagles would host the Lions in, and the Falcons would host the Seahawks. But of course you've got other teams that are still in the hunt in the NFC. The Cowboys are 9 and 4. Right now we have got we have got 4 and 9 and